Right, good evening, everybody. Um, so it's it's week ten. Uh, it's the final lesson, and um, we we've covered so much uh, this term. And um, last week, I I uh, was working on a picture of some antelopes, and it looks like they're under a tree and everything like that. But the idea there was to do a group of animals together, uh, and I particularly liked all the all the um, antlers and all the legs and the kind of pattern that emerged from looking at this group of animals as well. And the other thing, of course, was looking at light and shadow and that as well. So I'm going to be continuing with that work this evening. So I'm going to just show you what I was working from and what I'm kind of inspired by. Um, again, it's, it's looking at Impressionism uh, for the large part of it um, and including some different colour schemes and things within there as well to create an interesting picture. So we're going to go over to studio briefly and then get over to the studio um, desk and we'll we'll start them um, cracking on and and that and uh, if anyone's got questions I can answer those too. Right. Okay, so um this is the picture that I've been working from and um so as I mentioned before as like Peter Hall's work um, that we've looked at previously. He used um, quite soft backgrounds. So I've got his picture here. Let me just grab that. So he used these really soft backgrounds, but with directional kind of brush strokes and things, but then concentrated texture on there. Um, and in this photograph of antelopes, you can see that there are actually quite soft textures in the background and more um, uh, sort of uh, not rugged, but kind of earthy textures towards the front. And then you've got these really beautiful um, antelopes in the in the middle with the, the light uh, from the tr uh, or the shadows from the trees cast on their backs and things like that. So I thought it was a really lovely picture and a little bit of a challenge to tackle. Um, if you remember last week, I spent a little bit of time explaining how to enlarge your picture and how to grid it up um, so that you could draw all of these antelopes. So um, usually just drawing an animal on its own is enough of a challenge. So, But when we've got all of these uh, lovely creatures together, um, there's obviously quite a complication of uh, patterns and shapes and so forth. So I did use a grid uh, to help me get started and uh, a blue background as well. Um, so we can start to get sort of an overall bluish kind of impression to the picture, creating this impressionist idea. So I'm keeping my color palette quite limited to, to browns and yellows and whites at the moment. And then what I'll be doing after that is um, I'll be introducing some like um, some little bits of extra color in that, um, a little bit like this painting uh, just over here from, um, I think it was Shannon, Shannon Ford. To um, introduce all these beautiful marks and things in the impressionist, modern impressionist style that we've been looking at during this term. So don't forget the other thing is if you're working from any picture, sometimes it's nice to um, take away the color, the distraction of color, and just be able to see the black and white, or this is a heavily contrasted or edited picture where you can see the shadows and things that we, we originally started to look at at the beginning of this series of lessons. Um, so you can really see the light and the dark tonal qualities of the picture and help you to balance out the composition, um, even perhaps before you apply the colour. So if you remember last week, I started to apply um, the shadows and but before I did that, I did actually put in white around the back of the image um, before then um, adding mostly just the dark shadows. Today, I'm going to start with the, the lightest or the highlights on the other parts of the antelopes and then introduce the shadows and then obviously some more color and, and so forth. But I'm hoping to be inspired a little bit more by this, but it all depends how far uh, how far we get with it, um, having just two hours to do a painting with this much detail is a little bit of a challenge, but we'll see how it goes. So everybody else, um, everybody in class today, 
um, you could find an image that has um, a group of animals like this if you wish. But if you're still working on previous pieces and you want to get those finished for the end of the course, that would be fantastic. So just keep going in that direction and ask for help when you need it. All right, over onto the desk. So um, we've got my um, uh, Shannon Ford uh, inspiration just over here. So I'm going to keep that um, over there so I can refer to it. Um, and then we've got the painting. So I've started to um, work into it already this evening. I was looking forward to cracking on with it. Um, so using this this photograph here, um, you can you can spot where the the main um, highlights and shadows are and then start to apply those. Now I may not have applied them so so uh, contrastingly if I hadn't had this um, photograph here that I developed. So the other version of it, it looks quite different, obviously, because I've adjusted the tones and shadows, but it lets me see the, the balance of the lights and the darks on here and then introduce more subtle tones on top as well. So it's a lot of fun to sort of um, play around with. There's the grid that I used last week. Um, don't forget you can also divide it um, diagonally like that, which often helps to to uh, with drawing things accurately and looking at the negative and the positive shapes and so forth. Um, but I'm going to be working from this because this this antelope in the middle here, I find really really nice he's got a he looks beautiful and he's really nicely lit so um he or she i'm going to work on this this one first of all adding the light bits in and then i'll probably go over and do some of the others but i'll probably work mostly from this so i'll get the lights in introduce the darks using burnt umber and ultramarine uh, and then start introducing some of the colors which is pretty much what i was doing here last week. Now the other thing um, I was thinking I'd like to create a bit more atmosphere as well or a technique is to use the, the toothbrush. I, I did a little bit down here already um, but uh, later on I'm going to be do some controlled splattering on these areas in order to create a little bit more um, softness and atmosphere into the um, overall image as well. So lots of fun to have this evening. Um, so we're going to get started then. Uh, as I said, I didn't want to talk for too long because I want everyone to have the time to, to crack on. But um, if you've got questions or you need to show me your work, then please go ahead and and show me and, and then I'll go through anything you want me to uh, to help you out this evening. OK, is everybody happy? Yay, good. All right. Um, hopefully I can get a bit more of this done tonight and uh, introduce some more colours like old Shannon Ford over here. I'll put her over there now, out of the way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so if everyone's happy, we'll just crack on with it all. Thanks for those of you that have posted your work on, on uh, the Facebook page and everything. It's always really nice because I don't get to see everything that you do um, whilst we're in the class because um, you're also busy doing it. So it's nice to see the results of all your hard work and everything as well. All right, super duper. So I'll, I'm going to crack on with this. Now the heat's starting to take shape in my little studio. I'm going to take this off. Oh, that's better. Right. So I've got a little tiny, um, well, not a little tiny. I've got a number two round brush here that I'm using to uh, put in some of the details. Um, one thing about using uh, a pencil to do all of your your outlines for this is that if you're in the if you're in a well lit sort of studio like I am for the purposes of the class, um, the light reflects off the graphite, so it's a little bit harder to see. I can actually see it clearer. On the screen up here um, at the moment, um, but when I lean over, some of the lines disappear, which is which is really good fun. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, please let me know if you want me to have a look 
at um, what you're doing and I'll um, be very glad to go through something with you if you need me to. I'm going to paint this um, little antelope while we're doing that. So I'm using um, just a little bit of the white that came with the set. It's just called white, it's not titanium white or anything like that. Got the Dela and Rowney um, set of 48 colours, um, which I got from Amazon, which is really good value. You get all the different colours and you can obviously you can mix those up and create anything that you need. I think it might be all of the colours that they do in that series which is really useful of course. So what I liked about this antelope is he's like really, he's really just pure looking. He's got beautiful coloring. And, but the snowy white of his fur is what I thought was really nice. So I want to see if I can paint him first. Harry, the on antelope. You go, giving him a name now. <clears throat> so Last week I started using um, ultramarine and burnt umber in a really to create almost like a, a blackish sort of brown, so a really deep brown, which I then um, added a lot of the tonal elements to the picture. So this is before applying colour. Um, here I've gone the opposite way this week and I'm just using uh, white with a bit of water on the surface. So um, one of the things about having this blue background is you get all of the, you'll get, even if you put white over the top, you'll get the blue coming through, which is quite nice for the um, impressionist -y sort of effect we're going for um, with this. And if you add a bit of water to the, um, to the white acrylic, you'll also get that sort of slight transparency, which you can see already on here. So it's almost like using inks in a sense really that you use inks, you water them down, you get a little bit of transparency. So it's a little bit similar in that way um, for this. Um, now the thing to do of course when you've applied the, the white paint to an area, if you want it whiter then you just add more white over the top and build those layers up and um, you can be selective about where you apply the pure white back over the top to. Um, because you can mimic some uh, shadows on your um, on your animal here, in order to sort of get that uh, that um, the shadows and the highlights to stand out more clearly as well. So generally, you can see here that I'm I'm working across the whole image, adding in um, various elements and tones, trying out a little bit of. Um, different techniques in different places as I go along. Um, as you can see, I'm working on some of the details towards the back. Um, and one of the things that I enjoyed last week on the antelope towards the, the left is uh, creating these uh, nice strong shadows on the face of the antelope over there. So I was really interested in creating the the effect of the light from the trees, as I mentioned earlier, appearing on the antelopes themselves. Now, um, at this point, I felt ready to start adding some of the darker shadows and things and some of the details. So I've used um, burnt umber and ultramarine mixed together to create this really dark tone here. Um, and you can see some of the details will start to come out. Now the other thing I can do again is I can use a little bit of water to tone down. Um, so I don't have to use it pure. I can just add a bit of water and yet again you get some of the blues coming through and you can change the the um, intensity of the values that go on 
here as well. So, and the nice, the bit, I really enjoyed this bit because you start to see the whole of the animals um, appear, particularly that one I mentioned earlier in the middle, just slightly to the right as we're looking at it. Um, and then another nice thing about doing the tones in this case is that adding the ground in as well. We're starting to put the, the antelopes in a setting. And you'll see that I'm just using my finger to sort of, or I was then, just to sort of keep an eye on where I was working. Some of the details down here are quite complex in that you've got a little bit of the ant. Uh, the antelope's uh, legs or hoofs and then you've got um, all the all the sort of um, all the little uh, dappled shadows and things on the floor as well and then we're back into adding some white and you'll see me work on this bit I'm working on here so I'm adding um, a watered down white and then what I do later is I go back into it with um, some greys and, and then back over it again with some washes of colour which you'll see me do in a few minutes as well. So a few of the background antelopes going in there. I don't quite get to those this evening but um, I, I decided that I really wanted to do as much as I could to a point on this antelope because I thought it's especially um, pretty as I mentioned. So in goes some more of the tones and some of those tones that I'm putting in now can overlap with onto some of the um, some of the white areas as well if I want to. I do actually put in a little bit of ultramarine blue to add some tones um, in impressionist sort of style as you can see in Shannon's work, Shannon Ford, she uses different colours to add tones, so I'll do that a little bit later as well. That ear was a little bit big, so you'll see me adjust it slightly. And then we're putting in some more intense mark making. I'm still working from the black and white picture at this point um, I do start to use the color version there we go now here this is interesting because last week I was using the paint quite thick on the other side but today I've mixed the color that I want and I've used the tones that I've already applied underneath to apply the color like almost like a wash or a glaze back over the top um, and it's quite nice doing it like this because you can you can blend the paints and change the tones underneath quite easily. I'm trying to keep that harshness of the sh some of the shadows at the same time. And that was a little bit of watered down blue on his face just there as well. So this area that I'm painting now, it ends up being a little bit flat. So I go back in with a little bit of white a little bit later on as we progress. And this was me showing one of my paintings that I've been working on in collage. Anyway, back to the picture. So there we go, a little bit more white just to give a little bit more volume or shape to the belly of that particular antelope and then we put in some more glazes over the top of the tonal areas that I mentioned there and a bit of colour into his belly as well <clears throat> what I really liked about the antelope there in the foreground is, is the contrast between the whites and the darks on the body, very distinctive animal. Um, here I talked about a bit about what I did there with the green. I talked a bit about Shannon uh, Ford's work and decided just to push the boat out and try something a bit different. If you're going to try something different, we were talking about backgrounds as well 
and one of the students was a little bit overwhelmed by the background because um, perhaps I'd applied too many colors in there as, and things and it got a bit overwhelmed. So the thing to, to remember is to stick with one or two colors to begin with. Um, and then you'll see me a little bit later that green I felt was a bit too intense. So I work back over with the original background color, which is mainly white and simplify um, the whole thing a little bit. So you'll see that in a few minutes. I don't get much further with the other antelopes and things, but quite pleased with the result of this. Obviously there's a lot more refining and things to do I should want to carry on with it. Um, so we were chatting about the background. So you can see a bit, a bit of yellow going in there and then I'm kind of, you'd maybe think I was obliterating all the green, but there's still hints of the green, even though I put a patchwork of white over the top, still got touches of the green coming through, which is quite pleasant in a way. Obviously the original picture doesn't really have that, but here we are being artists, experimenting and pushing the boundaries of what we can really see in the image and creating something interesting. I hope. <laughs> the original purple or violet that I put on the ground there, I applied a little bit of white to as well to soften that. Um, but if you want to try something different out, try it in a small area um, that you can control. Because um, if you don't like it, you can remove it. Um, and the other thing to do as well, if you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure if this is working, is just to leave it and come back to it later. And you'll probably spot some of the things that you want to change. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this course. Uh, we're going to start again on the 18th of April. So hopefully see you then.